Hi, Dominica here from easysewingforbeginners.com. In this video, I'm going to be giving you some tips um, on how to maintain your sewing machine at home in between services. So this video is for a machine with a top loading bobbin in particular. If you're looking um, for a video with the front loading bobbin, then I'll put a link in the description box down below for you um, and you can check that one out. Okay. So to start off with, when you're doing a service at home, you need to make sure that the power is disconnected. And I've also removed my thread as well, my top thread and my bobbin thread. The next thing I'm going to do is just make sure that um, I've got a nice area to work with up here. So I'm going to remove the needle and actually going to move the foot and the ankle part as well, just to give me as much space as possible. So you would have had, you probably have one of these little screwdrivers um, with your machine when you first got it. So I'm going to use these to take my needle out and take the foot out as well, take the foot off or the ankle part. So I'm just going to very carefully take my needle off and you might use this opportunity to um, change this for, change your um, needle to a brand new needle. And you might be happy with just taking the foot off, but I'm going to take the ankle part off as well, just to give me that extra space to work with. Okay. So you can see here I've got a nice area to work with. Now, with this same little screwdriver, um, if you don't have a little screwdriver like this, maybe a washer or a coin might be able to get in there and do the trick. But um, I've got one screw up here on the top of my needle plate. Um, on my Singer machine, I've got one on either side. So whatever you've got, you'll need to loosen all the screws and just make sure that you remember where they came from. I'm going to take off um, the bobbin, bobbin cover there as well. Okay. All right, and your needle plate should just lift off from there nicely. Okay. Now I'm actually going to leave the screw there just so I remember where it came from. I'm just going to put that to the side and I'm going to make sure I don't lose any of my pieces. Okay, so you can see in here, I might go in a little bit closer just so you can see it really well. That's a bit better for you. And okay. So you can see I've got a bit of a build up of lint here. Um, I only recently had my sewing machine service, so I haven't got that much in there, but you'd be amazed how much lint and fluff and um, thread you do get stuck in there. So the first thing I'm going to do is remove the bobbin case. Okay, so it's just a matter of lifting it out like so. All right, so I'm just going to place that over to the side. Now, with your sewing machine, um, you may have um, been provided with a little brush, or if not, um, sometimes you can use a paintbrush, you could use the vacuum cleaner. Um, some people even like to use cotton tips to clean out all that fluff in there. Um, I'm not sure where my little brush is that I got with my sewing machine at the moment, so I'm going to use this as paintbrush just to get in between the teeth on the feed dogs here. Um, get in around the um, hook race just in here and just to sweep out as much fluff as I can. Okay, so as you're brushing it, try and brush it out of your machine and try not to let it fall down into the cracks. Okay, the more fluff that builds up in the feed dogs, um, the less efficient they will work. And if they get too much fluff in there, too, too built up, then it can stop your feed dogs from feeding the fabric through while you're sewing as well. Okay, so I'm just going to get my brush in there, flick it all out. Okay, 
right? Now, it'd be worth checking your sewing machine manual just to see if your machine needs to be oiled. This is a um, Janome DC4030 and my manual specifically says that this machine does not need to be oiled. So I'm not going to be oiling this sewing machine, but I do have a, a top loading Singer that needs to be oiled. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to switch over to my Singer sewing machine and show you how I'll oil that. But if in any doubt, um, check your sewing machine manual and it will tell you what you need to do for that machine. Okay, so I switched over to my Singer 7464 just to show you um, how to oil your sewing machine. Just double check your sewing machine manual just to see where you need to oil your sewing machine and to see if it actually needs the oil as well. Okay, so when you're oiling, just make sure you um, use sewing machine oil and you can get this usually from the um, supermarket or your sewing machine specialist as well. Okay, so in my manual it specifically says to put oil in the middle of the hook race here and also a little bit around the edge as well. Okay, so we don't want to overdo it. Um, I've just got a cotton tip here that I'm going to use to spread the oil around the outside. So I'm going to pop just a drop in the middle there. Okay, and then I'm also going to put some oil on my little cotton tip there and just put it around the outside of my hook race as well. I'm just going to turn the hand wheel as I put that around there. Okay, so that's all you need to do. Most sewing machines, perhaps just a dot in the middle there if it needs to be oiled. And for this one in particular, I need a little bit oil, of oil around the outside of the hook race as well. Okay, so now I'm back with the Janome DC4030. So I finished brushing out all the little pieces of fluff and lint. And I'm ready to put my sewing machine back together. Okay, so the, la the last thing I took out was the bobbin case. So... If you have a close look on your bobbin case, you have um, a little nodule or knob bit here. And on this part of the sewing machine, you have a stopper. So you just need to make sure to slide your bobbin in under the feed dogs. And that little knob should be going into the stopper there. Okay, so you should have a little bit of movement and you'll have your thread guides down here as well so you'll know that it's been put back in the correct way. I'm going to put my needle plate back on next. So I've got my screw in there still. So I'm just going to tighten it by hand first. I always find it easier just to do most of this by hand first. Right. And then just tighten it up with your little mini screwdriver that's really awkward to use. Okay. Put my little bobbin cover back on and put my needle and my foot and the ankle part back on as well. Okay. So I hope you found this video useful and don't forget to share it with others if you think they'll find it useful as well. Um, if you check out my description box below, I should have a link to um, a PDF for um, tips for maintaining your sewing machine at home as well, which will include all the links for your top loading machine and your um, front loading bobbin machine as well. Okay, so hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe to keep up to date with all my latest videos and thanks for watching. Thank you.